The question is, when a couple come for counseling, but then the, uh, they, they're not disclosing the problems, the root problems, and then what can we do? Uh, uh, um, root problem can be revealed in small problems. Shida yenyewe kabisa inaweza tambuliwa katika shida ndogo. You know, I will ask them um, now in in, uh, in marriage counseling, I will tell you my steps. Katika ndoa nitakuambia hatua zangu. First, I will ask them uh, do they have hope in this marriage? Ask both of them. Nitawauliza wakiwa wote wawili je, mnatumaini katika hii nini yenu? Ndo. Do you believe that the marriage can become better? Nyinyi mnaamini kwamba hii ndoa hii inaweza kuwa nzuri? Are you willing to work on a marriage to make it better? Mko tayari kufanya ili hii ndoa yenu iwe sawa. And I will share with them how beautiful a marriage can be. Na nitawaelezea vile inaweza ni vizuri eh, ndoa inatakana iwe. Okay, after they say yes we want to work on the marriage one method I use is to ask first I will tell them the way of communication what are good ways of communication I distinguish words of grace and words of the law what? words yes. of words of grace grace and yes. words of the law, the law, you know. Okay. Nitawaelezea kuhusu neema, nitawaelezea kuhusu sheria. And then this applies to the word of the word of God, the word of God has grace. Neno la Mungu lina ile neema. The word of God has grace like God loves us, God cares about us. Neno la Mungu lina neema, Mungu anatupenda, Mungu anatujali. And also the word of God has has the law to to tell us what to do. Na neno la Mungu lina mambo mengi ya kutuelezea kufanya. Now it's same applied to human relationship. Na hii pia inahusika na mwanadamu uhusiano. Now this is very important. You, you might have to take notes. Na hii ni ya muhimu sana. Muandike. With people you can say words of grace. Unapoelezea neno la neema. For instance, I care about you. Eh ya kwamba nakushughulikii kama nakujali. You are important. Wewe ni mzuri. What you are doing is great. I like to be with you. These are words of grace. People usually like to hear them. And then there is there are words of the law. We need to use we need to have words of the law too with the But there are different classes of now, the, the best is to guide people to find ways to solve the problem. So we have this problem in the family, how can we solve it? So that's the So that's the best is to guide guide guiding. And the next is Instruction, yeah, teaching, teaching. teaching. Ni kupatia mafundisho. For instance, we might have to teach, but then it depends on the tone of voice. Eh, tunaweza kufundisha lakini iwe ni hali ambayo sauti yako uirekebishi. For instance, you might say, well, I notice that every time we, you know, want to have appointment, always we are late. So how can we solve the problem? Mara nyingi tutasema kwamba tunapenda lazima tuwe na mpangilio jinsi tunaweza kutana and then we might talk about some ways we can be punctual na tunaweza kusungumzia vile mtu anaweza kuwa katika saa ambayo inahitajika kama tume instruction and then there is command na kuna hile command amri command has different tones too for instance, you can say, please wash the clothes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. That's fine. 
But if you say, what's the cause? Hurry and do it. And make people feel unhappy. And then there is pointing out the problems of people. You are too slow. You are too slow. You are too lazy. And then the last one is condemnation. You are no good. You never keep your promise. So these are different uses of the law. This is very helpful in relationship. Many people in marriage, they will say, you know, oh, I say to the husband, go wash the clothes, do, go do this, go do that. So these are not helpful. So I will explain to the couple, try to use words of grace. Try to use positive ways of using the law. For instance, say, well, it seems that we have problem talking to each other. How can we solve the problem? Can we sit down and talk about the children? Instead of saying, you never listen to me. You don't care about the children. That's not helpful. So I will ask the couple to talk to each other and try to use positive words to communicate. And then when they do it well and I say, wow, this is great. When they cannot do it well, then I will say, what do you think when you say that it will make the other person feel? And when I listen to what they say, I will try to dig out underlying problems. Turn it off. So when even when they talk about little things, I can take out the deep problems. So this need training. Now if you have time tomorrow, I can demonstrate this that is very helpful. Many couples I found that in many churches, the people in the church are destroyed by their marriage. When marriage is a problem, the Christians fall apart. Even pastors, they lose strength. Many churches, many members, many Christians were torn apart because of marriage problems. So there should be teaching about how to build up the marriage. And a lot of marriage problems because of communication problems. And lack of love for each other. And this, if there is teaching and counseling, it can be corrected. And so, marriage counseling and pre-marriage, premarital counseling are both very important. Dating counseling is very important. I know that many people, they, you know, in dating too, they have, you know, they just have sex, premarital sex, and it, it is destructive. Satan is using all this method to destroy Christian life. 
Shetana natumia hii nchi ya kufunja hizi ndoa. So it's important for us to learn how to counsel people, listen to people. Ni vizuri kusikiza na kuelezea hawa watu vile inavyotaka. But counseling is also very important to help people spiritually. Mashauri ni mazuri sana ya kusaidia watu katika ndoa. To help people handle their own personal problems. Ili watu wapate kuelewa kushauri mambo kushauri mambo yao wenyewe. if we want to raise up leaders in the church. Tukitaka kusaidia watumishi wa Mungu ama viongozi kanisani. We have to talk to people individually to encourage them to serve God. Tunatakana tuongee na hao watu mtu binafsi binafsi jinsi ya kutumikia Mungu. And listen to the problems and and try to counsel them to help them to uh, to follow God. Ili tusikize shida zao na tupate kuwashauri jinsi ya kutumikia Mungu. Instead of just teaching them, you have to obey God, you have to serve God. Badala tu ya kuwafundisha unahitaji kutii Mungu, unahitaji kufanya kazi ya Mungu. So this spiritual counseling is very important in our ministry. Hii mashauri ya kiroho ni mzuri sana katika huduma. And tomorrow when we have time, I can talk about that, but I just let you know the importance of counseling. Nilitaka tu muelewe kuhusu kule umuhimu wa kushauri. The importance of listening to people's needs and respond to them. Umuhimu wa kusikiza shida za watu na kusuluhisha ama kuwajibu. The importance of guiding people to change instead of ordering them to change. Umuhimu wa kushauri watu badala ya kuwalazimisha kusikiza mashauri unawapatia.